Okay, hello everyone. Uh, so this talk will be about leakage resilience and fault tolerance, both of which I think everyone, I guess everyone here knows at least a little about it. At least people didn't sleep during the previous talk. Uh, okay, so this picture I guess everyone here has seen thousands of times now. Uh, so Alice wants to send a message to Bob, but there is this eavesdropper Eve who has some access to the communication channel, and Alice doesn't want Eve to for Alice doesn't want Eve to read her message, so what she does is she encrypts her message and sends it to Bob. But what if there's a side channel from Alice to, Bob, to Eve? In that case, if Eve has some information about, uh, about Alice's message, even before she's in, she encrypts it, then our secure crypto system might not be secure. Uh, so one way you can do uh, you can mitigate this error is by shielding the hardware. So you make it impossible for Eve to, you make the side channel non-existent so, so that Eve can't get any information out of it. But this, these attacks are getting better with time. So uh, um, it's, it's very costly to, to improve the hardware so that every time there's a new attack, you'd have to redesign the hardware and this costs a lot of money. So you might, Ask yourself if this is if it's possible to do with software, and well, there are some skepticism regarding this, but I would say that well, theoretical cryptography, cryptography has something to say about this, and this is the era of leakage resilient cryptography. Um, so in this talk, I'm gonna uh, present a way to do general leakage resilient computation, um, and the way I'm gonna do this is by well doing it. Some, using some ideas from, uh, from quantum computation. And, uh, and in the end, we'll have a classical result. So this is only classical leakage resilience. But the, the reason why it works is quantum. Um, I'm not going to talk about, I'm not going to define leakage resilience uh, abstractly, but I'm going to give you the general idea of it. And uh, I'm not going to talk about all the ways you can do it uh, using only classical means. Um, but well, if anyone is interested, we can talk about this later, but I guess also Fred talked a lot about this. Okay, so this is the setup. Um, so we have a circuit that we initialize with a secret and we don't want this secret to leak to the adversary. Um, so we initialize the circuit and we give it black, we give Eve black box access to it. So she can send inputs to it, get outputs, the outputs will depend also on the secret, uh, but she can't look into the circuit. But she also gets some additional information, which we call leakage, and she can use this leakage to get some information about the secret. And the goal is that we should make the leakage useless to the adversary, so that whatever she gets should be uncorrelated with the circuit's execution. Okay, now, how do we see leakage in a quantum mechanical point of view. So, so here's a simple example where uh, the eavesdropper uh, copies one of the bits in the circuit. So one of the bit leaks and what you have in the end is an entangled state. Um, and this, this is just a particular case of this scenario where you have, uh, you have the circuit and, but this, the circuit interacts with the eavesdropper too and in the end you have an entangled state. But now this is, just, uh, this is just a noisy circuit, and the point here is that the leakage is a particular form of noise. So you might see where this is going already, but uh, just to make the point obvious to everyone, uh, suppose now that we have this entangled pair, um, and um, so one of, only one of, uh, only half of the pair goes through the circuit, and the other one we don't mess with it, uh, but of course there's the eavesdropper, so this is a noisy circuit, and in the end you have this tripartite state. But now suppose that this being a noisy circuit is reliable, meaning that in the end we have, if you look at B, you get the output, the output you get is close to what you get in the ideal case where there's no, there's no noise. Well, now the point here is that if A and B were entangled before the circuit, uh, and because this, this is a reversible circuit, so we could get the input from the output. This means that whatever entanglement you had before, you also have afterwards. 
So here you can just use the monogamy of entanglement and say that because A and B are entangled, then there can be no entanglement whatsoever with E. Uh, so that's exactly what we want. We want the liquid to be uncorrelated with the surrogate. So, well, the point is that uh, if you have a reliable surrogate, then it's also liquid resilient. Okay, now this is all fine, and I guess not very surprising if you know about QKD. Uh, the idea is similar. Uh, but there are two pressing issues here. One is that, so I introduced this idea of reliable surrogates, but in principle, there, there's no reason to believe that this is at all possible. But it turns out that it is, and this is done by using fault tolerant techniques. Um, the other issue is that this is all quantum. I want to do classical leakage resilience. So we should have a way to do all of this classically. Now for the first question, there has been a lot, of, a lot that's been said about it. And so I'm only gonna spend, not gonna spend a lot of time on this. So I'm gonna talk more about the second part, which is how to make it classical. Okay, so, so the thing is that we have this, we only want to perform classical computation, but there's no, there's no reason to believe that, each, that the fault tolerant method we use will also be classical. But the scenario we have is kind of like this. So you have this uh, classical input and we run some circuit and then you get this output. Um, and what we want is something like this where you have, you have again a classical input and you run the circuit C prime and you should get the same statistics as if you, if you use the upper circuit and then measuring the Z basis because this is the classical output that we see. And now, of course, you can always do this, but the question is whether we can do this while preserving the relationship between leakage and noise. Because if you have a C prime that's more complex than C, there's, there's no a priori guarantee. But if you have something that has the same form as the original, or that it in some way simpler than the original surrogate, then we, we still have the leakage and noise relationship. Okay, so now I'm gonna present some examples of components that we, we use in the fault tolerant implementation and show the classical translations. So first there's the CNOT gate. It's just a classical circuit, so there's nothing to do really. Um, the Z gate is more interesting, but because we, if you have a classical input and then you run a Z gate on it, then you only change the phase, which you won't see if you're measuring the Z basis. So you don't need to do anything. Um, same thing for the controlled Z gate. So you don't do anything to the inputs. Now this is a little trickier, state preparation. We need to prepare zero and plus. Zero is easy, you just initialize a register to zero. But the plus state you have to do some, well, actually the translation is just generating a random bit because if you measure a plus state, you just get a random bit. But the problem here is that if you did this to a minus state instead, then you'd get the same outcome, which is problematic because we, we want to prepare plus, but what if, say, we prepare plus, but there is a phase flip? Uh, if you measure it, you still get this random bit, but in this case, you have, you'd have noise in a quantum circuit, but no leakage in the classical circuit. But, so in order to overcome this, we just assume that this random bit is generated, generated in a leak-free manner. Um, and so the quantum equivalent of this would be to assume that the plus state is generated reliably, so, so with no noise. Um, okay, so if you have this, then the rest is easy. Uh, if you have phase measurement, so if you measure a classical input in a phase basis, then you, again, just get a, a random outcome. And we can, well, first we can, in our case, we can write the survey in this manner where you just add a plus state to it, and then you measure the first one. So, so you again get a random bit. Uh, and then in this case, the classical translation would be you generate this random bit, just prepare plus, and then add uh, A to it. Um, now the thing here is that this is not the same as the original circuit, but because we are assuming that uh, this random bit is generated leak free, then it's not any more complicated than the original one. So we can still say that Leakage is equivalent to noise, so we can do this. Uh, well, the last one is the Toffoli gate, which is again a classical circuit, so there's nothing to do really. Okay, so now just say a few words about fault Um 
Okay, let's go back to this original picture where we have where one uh, one wire leaks. So we have um, so you have the eavesdropper copies one bit to our subsystem. Uh, we can write this another way, which is you, you first you rotate to to the phase basis, then you execute a control Z, and then you rotate back. Uh, you can write this another way. I mean, is it really the same? It's you have now you have a plus state and you have a control Z, but now the Z is being applied to the first uh, to the user circuit. So in this case, you have what you have here is um, it's really so it's a phase flip that's being controlled by a plus state. So uh, it will run with probability half, and this is just a phase error. So you can see that by leaking one bit, you're introducing one phase error to the circuit which is a more concrete version of what I said before, that if you're leaking, you're generating noise. But here you have a one-to-one -one relationship between one wire, the value of one wire leaking and one phase error being introduced. Uh, now we can consider this leakage model where we have each wire in the circuit leaking with a fixed probability P, which you call the independent leakage model. Um, so if you look at the quantum picture, this will be equivalent to the independent phase noise model, where each wire, in which wire there is a phase error with a uh, fixed probability p. Uh, and this is good because there is this paper by Ali Ferris, Gottsman, and Presco, uh, which has uh, universal fault turns in the independent noise model, which is just what I said, except it's in both phases. So it's actually more than what we need. Um, and in particular, they implement the Toffley gate which is universal for classical computation. So if we just implement this, this circuit, then we, we will have what we need, which is universal, well, general leakage resumes. Um, now the circuit that they implement is actually, it uses some things that are not easy to translate to the classical case, but we were able to adapt this to another one where you can do the classical translation. So it only uses the components that I just talked about. Okay, so just to end, um, so this is the result that they have. Uh, basically, if you have an arbitrary quantum circuit, um, then there is a, an equivalent circuit that has a small enough overhead and it's reliable against the dependent noise as, as long as the probability of, of faults uh, is less than 10 to the minus five. Now using what I said, you can First, we can translate reliable to leakage resilient. And the independent noise model is equivalent to the independent leakage model. And uh, well, we can say a reversible classical surrogate is this particular case of a quantum surrogate. So we could say that. And by the other result, we can do this uh, using only classical components. So we can remove the quantum assumption and then we have a completely classical result in the end. Um, yeah, so, well, this is it. Okay, just to, to end, uh, I would just like to say that classical cryptography could profit from if people knew more about quantum information. In particular here we have, so we have a classical result that's based on quantum arguments. And, well, it's hard to for me to speculate about this, but I feel like some of the assumptions that they take in leakage resilience could be justified by seeing what, what it means in the quantum case, particularly the assumption that you have leak-free components. In this case, it was obvious why we needed it. And, well, I don't know, but it seems like it could lead somewhere. Okay, that's it, thanks. Um, so maybe the statement is also true the other way around. Uh, quantum cryptographers can know uh, could profit from knowing more about classical cryptography because I'm wondering like how how um, realistic this uh, this set your setting of leakages in in particular compared to the previous talk. It seems this probability is extremely small. And is there hope to improve that? Because I mean, it seems to be extremely far from reality, from a realistic leakage model. Yeah, this parameter is not very good, but. Well, th this is just the rough result that they have, but you can actually simplify the circuit and then you get a much larger threshold. But also you can, this independent leakage model doesn't seem very realistic. 
but it's, it leads to, to other leakage models for which if it's secure against this, then it's also secure against other models that, I mean, it's still debatable whether they're realistic, but they're used by the community. Um, That's also in your paper because you haven't mentioned yeah, it. It's in, yeah, it's not in the talk, but it's in the paper. You mentioned in the introduction you would not talk about classical models to uh, address the same problem, but could you say a few words how it compares to existing results? Um, well, well, there are, it's possible to compare, but it's not, I mean, this model is hard to compare to the other ones used, but there's this other model uh, called noisy leakage, where you have each wire could leak with, uh, could leak, but so every wire leaks, but what the adversary gets is a noisy version of it. And in fact, this scheme is also secure against that. And uh, well, the parameters are not as good as the, the other results, but it's also, I mean, yeah, it's, so it's not as good as the classical ones, but this is just the first result. And also it's, well, it's, so it's actually two results. So there's the general relationship between leakage and noise, and there's this practical scheme, which depends on, a, on an existing fault tolerance scheme. Now it's, to me, it's not clear that we could translate other photoron schemes, but there's work to be done in that. So I don't know.